Lecture 13 quiz review is going to be on cancer, which generally people do well on, but there are a few odds and ends that you have to pay close attention to. So let's begin. One of the first questions you're going to have on cancer is how they're classified, and it generally comes from this list. So just be familiar with how we classify cancer. The second one is actually going to apply what you learn from benign and malignant tumors in that benign stay in their site of origin where malignant metastasize. And in those, I'll use these cancer, cancer classifications as examples to say things like, oh, a melanoma in the kidneys. Well, that'd be an example of one that's metastasized because melanocytes are supposed to be in the skin. And when they migrate out and go into other parts of the body, that means that they've metastasized. They're no longer benign. Um, other ones um, may, you know, say a... Uh, this type of cancer is associated with um, freckles and moles. Again, that's a melanoma because melanocytes are associated with freckles and moles. Um, so there are a couple of different questions in there designed to basically test you on a couple of different ones. I can't go through all the cancers because there's like 256 different types of cells in the human body. And so there's a lot of cancers out there. Basically, you just need to know the fundamental principle of why we call them the names that we do. It's generally after the name of the cell, like leukocytes, or after the name of the organ that they're found in, like we could say pancreatic carcinoma, and that's why the word carcinoma is used as a general term for cancer, um, and, and just giving the, the nomenclature of the organ before that. The next set of questions are going to be on these first four modes of cancer treatment. The other, the last three, immunotherapy, targeted therapy, stem cell, these are things that are just kind of new age ones that I don't really care for that to be part of the core curriculum, but they are kind of the next generation ways of trying to treat cancer. But these first four, surgery, radiation, chemo, and hormone, generally people mix up radiation and chemo. So pay close attention to those. Again, radiation only damages DNA to trigger apoptosis. That's generally this checkpoint right here in the cell cycle to make sure that the DNA is able to be copied without any major mistakes. And this is one of those checkpoints that will induce apoptosis if, it's, uh, if it doesn't pass that. Well, that's one of the things that radiation therapy triggers is damaging the DNA so that you trigger apoptosis in the cancer. Chemotherapy, again, are enzyme inhibitors. They are essentially things that block key enzymatic processes in the cell and induce apoptosis. And the, and the range of this, these drugs, there's over 7,000 that the FDA has approved. So there are a lot of different drugs that are used to administer to treat cells that are rapidly growing. Remember that hormone therapy is basically a disruption of the hormones that tell the cells to grow rapidly. It's not that the cells are themselves are problematic, it's that your hormones are out of balance, and this is used to disrupt the signals that basically tell the cells to divide rapidly. Another two questions you're going to have are on cancer cell characteristics. So make sure you know what cancer cells are and what they are not. This is what they are. They look differently. They lack contact inhibition. They have limitless replication potential because of the telomere shortening. They evade some apoptotic triggers, not all, just some. So look for the contrast, that normal cells are specialized, that they have contact inhibition, that they have limited replication potential, and that they don't evade, that they keep all of their apoptotic programming um, to be able to respond to any problems that arise from the cells. Now, other questions you'll have will be on telomeres or angiogenesis or um, apoptosis. These are terms that I'll describe, and you will choose those from a list. So those aren't too difficult. You just make sure you, you understand what they are and what we've talked about. Now, the last questions you're going to have, these are the last about three questions or so, are on the genetic causes of cancer. And this is where you need to make sure you understand that these are groups of genes. Basically, proto-oncogenes are groups of genes that collectively promote the cell cycle and prevent apoptosis. And tumor suppressor genes are groups of genes that inhibit the cell cycle and stimulate apoptosis. When you mutate 
proto-oncogenes, they become oncogenes. When you mutate tumor suppressor genes, we call them mutated tumor suppressor genes, right? So one oncogene is enough to, it's like putting your foot on the gas. But in order for tumor suppressor genes to combine to make it a problem, you have to have both, because you have two copies of every gene, you got to have both of the copies mutated to cause a problem because it's like you have redundant breaks. You have two sets of these genes, and if one's a problem, then another one can kick, can basically compensate for it. But when both of them are problematic, the combined effect, that's what causes cancer. And this is a possible question on the quiz too. It's oncogenes and mutated tumor suppressor genes. That's ultimately what leads to some of the genetic causes of cancer that you'll be looking out for. The last question fundamentally comes down to the concept of passing cancer on from generation to generation. You don't actually pass the cancer on. You pass the predisposition to cancer on because you're passing the genes on. You're passing on the oncogenes, the mutated tumor suppressor genes. And this just gets you one step closer to uncontrolled cell growth that can happen sometimes very early on in a child's life, unfortunately. And so that's one of the questions that I'll ask is that can, they can only be these mutated genes that are passed on through the gametes. You know, if you have skin cancer and have a kid, you're not going to pass that those genes that mutated in your skin onto your kid. They can only be passed on through the sperm or the egg of genes that you inherited or new mutations that may have occurred in your gametes, and that's rare. Um, generally, they're passed on from generation to generation from a long time ago. So that's the uh, outline for the cancer. Make sure that you get each one of those things in, in check. And, and uh, most of them are pretty straightforward, but the genes are the ones that people generally uh, have the most difficulty with.